Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sicil Gülmez. I'm participating from uh, Estonian Maritime Academy. Uh, I am the very new uh, postdoctoral researcher in very new uh, and fresh uh, research group, Maritime Transport Research Group. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to present our uh, ongoing project, Sustainable Flow, uh, which mainly uh, aims at decreasing the CO2 emissions in Baltic Sea region. And uh, these are our uh, research group uh, participants. Uh, so uh, we have three uh, professors, five PhD students, and one industrial PhD, and one research assistant. Let's continue with uh, our uh, slides. So uh, when we're talking about the emissions, you know that the, uh, the actually refers to greenhouse gas emissions produced by the economic activities. So uh, regarding the share of the transportation uh, within all economic sectors, uh, the, uh, the transportation has the highest second uh, share among the other uh, tr uh, economic sectors within uh, 22%. And when we diving deeper into the transportation uh, sector, and we can see that the maritime transportation uh, has the uh, uh, one of the uh, biggest uh, one of the biggest uh, contributor of the global uh, greenhouse gas producing. So, uh, as an in, in Maritime industry, uh, international maritime organizations can be seen as the main regulator and set several standards for the shipping activities, especially for the vessels. Uh, so uh, they are also uh, uh, have several uh, ambitious targets to uh, achieve the zero uh, emissions uh, by the 2050 and uh, try to get uh, zero uh, emissions uh, by 2050, and they are setting several standards for the um, energy efficiency, navigation, safety, and the uh, collusion, pollution at the sea. And one of those uh, standards are energy efficiency operational index. And uh, by implementing such kind of uh, measures to in uh, shipping industry, of course, we can see that uh, we can catch a uh, significant reduce, but it's not enough solely uh, by applying this such kind of uh, measures. So uh, we need additional measures to uh, reduce the uh, greenhouse gas emissions. <clears throat> Some of uh, the uh, IMO's uh, measures uh, covers the design, operational, and economic solutions. And some, uh, some of them are, uh, for example, design-related uh, Precautions or measures are can be seen as the hull and superstructure and the uh, energy management and the operational and economic related solutions are uh, voyage optimization, fleet management logistics, and uh, several uh, speed, op speed optimization uh, techniques uh, can be used uh, in the shipping industry. But uh, of course, uh, we need an additional innovative and technological solutions to uh, achieve that zero uh, targets. So, um, these are mostly related to the vessels, uh, but uh, of course in many, many sectors, or especially the shipping sectors, can uh, choose a path to green transition and follow their ambitions and follow their own measures to achieve uh, that sustainability targets and the uh, emission reduction targets. Uh, so, uh, but, uh, regarding the IMO's regulations and the uh, standards, uh, where is the port? Where is the port placed their uh, measures? So, and vessels activities and the ship activities cannot be uh, independently uh, evaluated uh, from the port operations. So, it also requires in shore-based activities. Like, um, and uh, of course, the ports industry also uh, is a um, huge contributor to the greenhouse gas emission production. Uh, so, uh, according to the um, United Nations, we can uh, categorize the uh, port-based emissions under three categories, under three scope. The first scope is the uh, 
port direct emissions related to the uh, port owned fleet vehicles, buildings, and the uh, stationary sources. And this uh, scope two is the uh, purchased electricity, of course, ports are using the uh, energy and this energy maybe comes from the fos uh, fossil fuels and the other uh, resources. So they, uh, while producing that energy, uh, it also uh, produces the uh, CO2. And the uh, scope three is the uh, port tenant related activities also contributes the um, uh, CO2 uh, emission production uh, in the port area. So uh, within the light of all those information, uh, our um, project, Sustainable Flow, uh, which is um, uh, uh, which is funded by the uh, European Union and uh, prepared uh, uh, within the context of Interreg Baltic Sea uh, program, uh, we mainly aim uh, aim to develop practical solutions and digital tools to support CO2 reduction and energy saving measures in transportation. And uh, these attempts uh, try to create an energy saving and production of the renewable energy at uh, ports. So, uh, we, uh, who we are actually? Uh, we are um, four country and seven pilot uh, ports. Uh, we are using, uh, we are collaborating with that ports uh, for uh, collecting the data, surveying, and the um, and the implementation of the uh, project, actually. Uh, our pilot ports are Port of Roma, Port of Puri, Nar Shopping, Öxelusund, Mariaham, Tallinn, and Port of Riga. And uh, our project partners uh, are the uh, Satakunta University of Applied Sciences as a lead partner, and the Swedish Maritime Administration, Aland University of uh, Applied Science, International Transport Development Association, Tallinn Technical University, we are, uh, Fintravik and uh, Swedish Confederation of Transport Enterprises. So what we are doing actually in this project, we are, uh, we are just at the beginning of the uh, project. So uh, first of all, we try to determine uh, the current situation of the ports and their tendencies to um, address the European uh, Union and the uh, United Nations goals, actually. So uh, we are analyzing, uh, collecting the data and surveying the benchmarking of the current operations. And we are trying to actually uh, catch the gap, how we can implement the uh, energy efficiency uh, measures and how we can create additional energy efficiency uh, uh, measures. So um, this is uh, also from our site visits with our partners and the uh, pilot ports. Um, and thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. A really necessary thing to do in order to, um, to reach the future which is worth of living in. Um, but there are, I think that there will be many questions from the audience about how it is practically possible to do. Juha, please. Thank you for a very, very nice presentation. Uh, how would you rate the, the, the fact that the future fuel for ships uh, in, in, let's say, foreseeable future is shrouded in the great, great uncertainty. How do you rate the, the, the significance of that? Actually, uh, uh, it requires, you know, the technological advancement. We um, actually, IMO has, uh, of course, set several measures. And the first one is they are focusing on mostly operational and the design aspects and the, uh, and for the, fuels and future fuels, uh, they are still, uh, you know, uh, making so much investment to find a new solution, especially uh, for not uh, finding a new fuel solutions, but also distributing them to the, across the different regions. So uh, actually, uh, this is the, I think the most urgent issue, the uh, designing the supply chain of the, how we can distribute that fuels actually. Very good answer. We just had the International Research Ship Operators meeting a couple of, couple of weeks back in, in Belgium, and the, we, there we had a legal view and the, the IMO's view on the, on the future ship uh, propellant fuels. 
And the fact is that it's, it's absolutely uncertain yet. Yeah. Uh, depending on the production and the, the developing economy and the distribution, like you said, uh, it's, it's, it's shrouded in great mystery yet. Yeah. Thank you. That's why they are uh, postponing yeah. the targets, you know, 2015. Some more questions? I think this uncertainty in the future is just one part of the structural universe. We can't know everything uh, about future. This is forbidden by, for example, by the uh, yeah, laws of nature, so even Newton's laws. Um, I still have a nasty question. Uh, your, one of your diagrams was telling that up to 75% of reduction is possible by optimization of ship speed. Um, optimization of ship speed means that the consumer must wait. Uh, if the consumer becomes nervous, what are the consequences and who is, paying, who is going to pay for that? <laughs> Actually, this is a good question, and uh, this is our very new research uh, question with the uh, Professor uh, Tapaninen. And uh, actually, uh, it should be argued that uh, we all say that the sustainability is good things for our future, but how the shippers are available uh, or aware of this uh, concern. So uh, this is the first thing. Uh, I think the uh, continuous and ongoing um, pressures may be uh, one-sided, according to me. Uh, of course, uh, it needs to be increased the consumer awareness about the uh, green future and the sustainability, I think. Thank you, and it's again never, ever alone again. We have to do yeah. that together. Thank you very much. <laughs>